If you've been following the channel, you might know that my wife has banned Tao from the house. But we keep getting message after message about one Tao unit in particular that you guys want to see on 40k in 40 seconds. We paint a lot of Synthwave Warhammer on the channel. We've done some weird wires, grimdark, organic, with and without an airbrush. But we've never really focused in on the art style with the deep dark shadows and the really hard neon lines. Until now. The Tau Commander Farsight, the model that's probably going to see me divorced. We're starting off with a black primer and we're going to shoot a little bit of blue onto here. Now, the blue is not a base coat. I repeat, is not a base coat. We just want to take away some of the intensity from the black. Black is a really deep, dynamic color and we want to use that to effect, but we don't really want it everywhere. From here on out, it's all traditional brushwork. We're going to start off with AK Interactive's Amethyst Blue. Now, this is actually a purple. I don't know why they've called it blue. They just have. Now, the easiest way to describe the areas that we're going to pick out for this color, because we're painting it in blocks. There's going to be a little bit of glazing, but it's essentially all blocks. The easiest way to think about this is value sketching. We're going to pick out some very, very prominent details, but we're also going to be sculpting with our brush and creating volumes that aren't really there. And this is the art style behind it all. In the dark art synthwave style, there is a lot of very, very deep dark shadows, which is what we have here. And then everything is basically outlined by what the mind kind of conceives as a reflection or the OSL, the light bouncing off of the details, and that's how we can actually see the details. And that's what we're going to play off here. While we're painting in blocks, we do want to glaze out and blur some of the transition, but just a little bit. This isn't going to be super, super smooth gradients. We still want to step from dark to light and kind of jumping up those values as we go. This is what's actually going to give us a little bit more of a non-metallic neon glow effect, which you'll see what that looks like later in the video. And taking that first step into that effect, we need to go around and paint some magenta all over the middle of all the purple parts. This is definitely one of those paint styles where you have to keep repeating to yourself, trust the process. It's not going to look pretty right until the last second. Now the magenta is going to go into all the sections that are basically going to be looking like they're reflecting light. But this is going to be a lot easier because we've already laid down the purple. We've already laid down and established that baseline of where everything's going to sit. Magenta can be a fairly transparent paint to work with at times, so a couple of coats here is really going to help us out to bring that vibrancy. When you're finished with the magenta, it's a great idea to take a step back and check out your work, and you can see it all start to come together a little bit. Then we're going to start to blur out the lines between the purple and magenta. Again, this is what's going to give us our neon feel. For the final highlight to give us that glow, we're going to mix in skin tone with our magenta and it's going to create this really bright pinkish tone. It's not quite white, you don't want to go to straight white for this one. That's going to be overbearing. Inside all of the magenta that we've painted on, which was inside all of the purple that we painted on, we're going to paint this colour in just little strips and this is what's really going to make the whole thing pop. If it helps, think of this as a lightsaber, where your brightest, lightest color is in the middle, and that's what's giving you your light. And then the color of the lightsaber itself gradually fades into the outside or the surrounding of the blade. And that's essentially what we're creating here. Or if you want to think of it in terms of highlights, this would be a spectral highlight, where the sharpest edges would be getting the most concentrated form of light. Now when you finish with that, you've basically done all the purples and magenta. Take a look at that, how easy was it? But now we're going to do the same thing with green on the legs. Now we want to start bringing in some different colours to make it interesting. We're going to go around and pick out all the outlines, exactly what we did with the main parts of the armour, except we're just going to be doing with legs. So we really want to bring out those shapes and volumes and all the details. We 
or even go down to little toesy toes and I decided to do the head the same way. While doing the head, remember the shoulder pad because it's a very, very similar shape and we're going to do the same thing, just one big stark line. With the emerald green done, we're going to go into blue green from Vallejo and do the same thing as we did on the purple. We're going to paint inside of the lines. Now, some of this is going to be really helpful because we do have some very, very defined lines and shapes. We can basically edge highlight through here for the most part. The cool part about this art style is if you have any overspill, you can go back with black and just tidy everything up, get some nice crisp lines. From here, we mix a little bit of AK white into the blue green and we're gonna go around and do the sharpest, thinnest highlights that we can on the inside of our two colors. Again, just like the lightsaber, brightest light source in the middle, colors to the outside. After this, we're going to paint the iconography. Now, we need a little bit of heat, so we're going to start off with base coating everything on here white. When I say everything, I mean like literally just these little iconography details. When that's done, we're going to pull out some Yandon Contrast Yellow, and we're basically just going to base coat. This is where you get some absolutely killer saturation. Contrast paints and speed paints are fantastic for this kind of application. Once that's done, we can start to make it look pretty. We're gonna take a little bit of orange and we're gonna go about halfway down. Now, I am gonna glaze out this transition just a little bit, but these details are so small that the slightest gradient can really make it look super smooth. After that, I mix in a little bit of magenta and just hit the bottom third. Now the sword. The sword actually got repainted a few times. Originally, I wanted to do kind of like a neon rainbow and when I'd finished the first part, it really didn't look fantastic. So I decided to go back, I gave it another shot and it still looked horrible. So you're allowed to go back and paint things over and over and over again. And this is why it's better to paint in smooth, thin layers. I started off with the amethyst blue, which is really just the purple. And I kind of just wet blended all the way up. I used all the different shades of blue that I usually use and the same blues and purples that we had on the main armor to kind of bring it all together and feel like it's one piece. The thing I've found with wet blending, a lot of people think it's a one and done kind of deal, but it's really not the case. After you get your first mixes and blends together, let it dry and go back over either with some glazes or get the same two colors and mix them again over the same area to really pull in that gradient. For wet blending, you also want to use slightly thicker paint. Now, all I'm saying is don't thin it down to what your usual layer or glaze consistency would be. That's where you're going to go wrong. It won't mix properly, it'll dry too quickly, you'll end up tearing paint all the rest of it. After that's done, I just went over with a little bit of an edge high with blue, working them up in the same gradients to give it a little bit of pop. This model's already pretty busy, so we can take some passes here and there. And now we get to do the best part. It's the glory shots. This thing is so damn cool, especially from an arm's length away. This is probably tabletop plus to get the best effect from a model painting from the style. If you try out this paint style, I would love to see it. Tag us on YouTube or Instagram, where else, we're everywhere over social media. And while I'm on the subject, I just want to thank everybody. At the time of recording this video, we actually clicked over to 10,000 YouTube subscribers. So a massive thank you to everybody that supported the channel. And a massive thank you to all the guys on our Patreon that keep the channel going. We love you all, and we'll see you next Tuesday.